What's up YouTube? This is Albert Aldridge of albertaldridgefitness.com. I do hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you very much for clicking on the video. And Mr Numpty here yesterday, I forgot to take my good quality camera to the gym so I had to film with a poorer quality camera, camera but still got a good video. So that wasn't too bad. If you want to see that video then click the link just here but there will also be one at the end of the video. And today the battery light has already come on for my camera, plus we've got a pneumatic drill that's going on around the corner. So there's always something that is trying to stop me from recording and it's really annoying. But anyway, today I'm going to be taking you through my chest workout and how you can bring up your chest if it's lagging and how you can build a good chest in general so it's popping out the shirt and it's nice and muscular but if you do have a topic that you'd like me to talk about in these daily uploads that I do apart from the day of eating I do on a Sunday then just let me know in the comment section below I'll be happy to cover that topic for you but I started off this session with bench press and just with this just to bring this back down to earth with this lean bulk it will be brilliant if I could add 2.5 kilos to my lifts every week and a rep to my lifts every week. That would be amazing, but it's not realistic. So don't expect to see PRs all the time because it's just not going to happen because other things are going to play a factor. And because I'm doing such a gradual increase in weight, it means I can bulk for longer, but I won't always be progressing every week. However, there are a lot of people who just focus on increasing the weight and increasing the repetitions and that is the definition of progressive overload and whether they've made some progress or not. However, you do need to think about if the weight feels easier to handle, if you're more confident under the bar, if you're able to do more sets within the workout, if you're maybe less breathless between, um, if you're doing the same rest times between exercises but you're not as breathless, then again, that's a form of progression. You've got to look at other little bits in your workout, not just increasing the weights and not just increasing the reps. And also tempo, that's another one, there's so many different things. And in this workout today, it, uh, my strength just wasn't there really. Um, I did bench press, started off with 75 kilos. I just, I should have done 70 kilos for slightly higher repetitions, but I felt all right. But the night before I'd only had about three and a half hours sleep and the night before that, about two and a half. I'm serious. Just because sometimes I have to stay up late to finish nutrition plans if I've said to someone that I'm gonna send it to them by the end of a certain day. So in all, I've had around six hours sleep across two nights, so that certainly didn't help, but no excuses. I did feel like I wanted to fall asleep when I was on the flat bench, but it just wasn't really going up too well. Um, so I think I got five or six reps for my first AMRAP set, and then I was doing the rest pause as normal for the rest of that set, and sets two and three to get up to 12 repetitions. Then after that, I did Smith Machine Incline, and obviously this is the hypertrophy portion of the workout, so I'll go slightly higher repetitions. But what I like to do, and what I, advise anyone to help build a chest is retract your shoulders back so what that means is just squeezing your shoulder blades together imagine you're holding a pencil between your shoulder blades when you're performing the exercise so you have to do it throughout the whole movement so that doesn't mean when you push the barbell up that you bring your shoulders forward and that your shoulder blades come become apart you've got to keep them retracted the whole time that ensures that you'll be able to get the best stretch in the chest and what we are looking for is a stretch and a good contraction if you want to build a chest. Because if you're not feeling the muscle work, then obviously if you're doing a bench press, you will be working it a little bit. But you want to feel the targeted muscle work in order to get the best results. You've probably heard that many times from personal trainers, but it's because it's true. So you've got to make sure that you keep your shoulders retracted, keep that chest sticking up. You're gonna have a slight natural arch in the lower back region, that's absolutely fine. Make sure you keep your hips and butt on the bench. That is a habit of mine, I've gotta try and break. My butt likes to rise off the bench. 
and then not flare your elbows out too far because that could put a bit of pressure on the anterior deltoid and not tuck them too far in. I mean, you can do that, but we want to target the chest and not the triceps or the shoulders. So go 45 degree angle down as you bring the barbell up and down and just make sure you feel the chest contract. But if you do struggle with the mind to muscle connection, so you can't really feel your chest work when you're doing chest exercises, then what I would recommend is doing paused repetition. So coming down, feeling the stretch, pause, Think about the muscle working, stretching, then push it back up and really try and bring your elbows together. That will bring me on to my next point and really try and feel the chest contract. But as I was saying, that brings me on to my next point. The next exercise, I did the pec deck machine. And what I personally find is that if I have, if I start off with my arms too far up on the pec deck, that when I bring my arms across and bring my elbow towards the midline of the body, that I feel a lot more pressure in my anterior deltoid. So I try and have it around my elbow, around in line with my chest or a little bit lower. And therefore, when I bring the weight in, because the weight is as you uh, bring the two handles together, I try and get my elbows as close to each other as possible, but sticking my chest out as I'm doing this and and I'm squeezing the handles as hard as possible because that is going to help you engage as many muscle fibres as possible in order to tear them down and help build them up in the long run and build a chest. But when you bring your elbows together, that is going to help you feel a contraction in your chest, feel it shorten, and then you want to feel it lengthen and in the eccentric part of the face as you lower it down, but keep it nice and controlled, really squeeze at the top. If you have to hold it for a second, that's absolutely fine. It's the blood going into the muscle and you're feeling the targeted muscle fibers work. And that's just oxygen and nutrients going into the muscle as you're working during the set. Then after that, I went on to some heavy dips and supersetted this with a good exercise I like to implement in my training. It's where you'll see it on the screen, but you have a dumbbell just in front of you. Your shoulder is slightly anteriorly rotated. Then what you want to do is bring, again, the arm is nice and straight. Bring the shoulder up like a bit of a shrug, but also bring the elbow towards the midline of the body. And therefore, you're able to target. It happened, the battery died on me again in this video. But as I was saying, bring the elbow towards the midline of the body and actually crossing through the central line. That It's like a line that goes down your um, the center line of your body. Bring the elbow across it means you can fully squeeze and contract the pec, therefore isolate each pec individually. So I do recommend implementing that exercise if one of your pectorals are lagging and you'd like to bring it up. And as I said before that, I did dips with it and I did weighted dips. I was aiming for 10 repetitions, but there's a lot of people I do see in the gym who have their shoulders up when they do dips. So they con they're doing dips like this, but this puts your shoulders into a bit of a vulnerable, vulnerable position and this is in correct form. So what I do is bring my shoulders down. I lean slightly forward to in order to engage more of the pectorals. But if I want to engage more tricep, then what I do is stay more upright and fully lock out at the top in order to engage the tricep. But to engage more chest, I lean forward and then not come all the way up to lock out but just before so I can keep all the tension on the chest. Then finally I ended off with skull crushers. You'll see I did a pretty rubbish camera angle but managed to correct it um, by doing another one. And what I do is I like to put it into two movements so bring the skull, bring the easy bar down to my forehead then behind and then all the way up in order to get a good um, contraction, good squeeze but also stretch at the bottom in order to feel the um, triceps working. Keeping my elbows tucked in in order to not feel any elbow pain. So in order to get a good chest and a good development in the pectoral muscles, think about the squeeze and contraction when you're training. Make sure you eat enough because you need to be in a calorie surplus in order to build muscle. Then doing two different types of movements, flies and pressing motions. Pressing motions are like barbell bench press, dumbbell bench press when you just push the weight up. They're really good in order to use a lot of weight, put a lot of stress on the chest in order for it to grow. But then fly movements are also very essential, especially for the mind-muscle connection. So what I mean by that is any movement that brings the elbow towards the midline of the body like cable flies, dumbbell flies and pec deck flies and that will just help you feel um, in the long term help you to contract your chest a lot better and therefore stimulate more growth from, from that and finally doing a combination of angles like the, on the decline, incline bench press, 
flat bench press, hitting your chest from all different um, angles is really good for overall development because if you just focus on one then you have say a part of your chest that is lagging. So if you did loads of flat and no incline then you would have a chest that's well developed on the bottom but not the top. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was just a nice tutorial in order to set you up to get a really big chest. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my website, there's a link in the description below. Comment below because I will reply to you. Share this post with anyone and leave a like on the video. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Alla capiche, and I'll see you tomorrow.